Okay, I have one cheek on this chair and one cheek off because the, the king is sleeping and I don't want to disturb him. I'm trying to nudge him over and he won't budge. Hey guys, I am filming a little pregnancy update slash q and I've been wanting to film one of these uh, for a little while now, but there really hasn't been much excitement or action or changes, things to report on, so... My ear is doing this crazy thing again, which I'll talk about in the video, and it's annoying. I posted a bump picture on Instagram, and I asked you guys to leave your questions there. So I'm gonna go through a lot of your questions, and for now, I will just give you a little update. I am currently 19 weeks, and feeling really good. Can't complain. My nausea pretty much has gone away. It lingered a lot into the second trimester, which I wasn't expecting because with my first pregnancy, it ended, like right as the second trimester was starting. And I don't feel as tired as I was in the beginning. Um, so that's been really nice. One thing that has really been giving me issues is my left ear. And I did go to the ENT to have it looked at. They just chalked it up to pregnancy related. And I talked about this in my, I think, getting ready with me video. But basically, it sounds like something pops and then my hearing becomes really magnified in my left ear, almost to where I can hear myself breathing, my voice sounds louder in this ear than in this ear, and it doesn't last all day. Sometimes it only lasts a couple minutes, but when it happens, it's super annoying because I almost feel like I'm shouting. Oh, now we're getting up. Sorry, bud. And so I then tend to whisper, not whisper, but like really lower my voice and then nobody can hear me talking. So it's like this weird thing. Like it's very not balanced, like from one side of my head to the other. So that's been really annoying. And when I talked about that in my get ready with me, a lot of people said they experienced the same thing. So I do think it is pregnancy related. It's something that I feel like I've dealt with before, even when I wasn't pregnant and I've been dealing with for a while but I just noticed it a heck of a lot more now being pregnant. And I don't know if it maybe started when I was pregnant with Addie. I can't remember when exactly it started, but it is super annoying. And sometimes it almost makes me feel a little lightheaded too. So that's been kind of a bummer. But other than that, there really hasn't been too much changes. Still really enjoying fruit, always wanting like fruit and vegetables, like raw vegetables, beets. I've been like on this really weird, like beet kick, pickled beets. I've been actually like twice a week going to Subway and getting flatbread, flatbread sandwiches with all veggies and like oil and vinegar. That's kind of been a craving, I guess if you want to call it that. I still kind of have a weird aversion to my lattes, like coffee. I've never really been a coffee drinker. I've always been uh, a cinnamon latte girl and I really just don't have any desire to drink those and I do still really enjoy and even crave iced green teas so I've been drinking one of those like once a day other than that like it's been pretty boring there's no like weird food aversions super crazy cravings my scent smells haven't really been heightened where things are making me nauseous so let's get into your questions probably the most asked question is if we're going to find out the gender or not and I'm we're still on the fence about that we went from not not gonna find out to we're gonna find out to now we're like I don't really know if we're gonna find out Dan really wanted to find out in the beginning and I didn't and now I kind of really want to know and he doesn't want to know so it's just this like I don't know I don't know if we're going to know part of me would like to know because I just want to be prepared there's going to be a lot happening when the baby's born three months away from the wedding and i just feel like my type a personality will do better with knowing but i also loved the surprise of not knowing with Addie, and always said that i would continue to do that with pregnancies because it was just such a great surprise yeah i don't know i really don't know it's, i feel like it's going to be a very last minute decision their most asked question was to share if we have names picked out or what our favorite names are we don't have solid names picked out for boy or girl we both have names that we really like a couple of them for either gender but i'm not going to share them because i'd prefer to keep it a surprise so yeah, but I will say that the names that I had before I knew Addie was a girl have totally changed. Like, totally changed. I didn't keep any of my, like, favorite boy names or my second runner-up name to Addison. For this one, I just 
they're totally different this time around. Mrs. Underscore Showtime underscore asks, what's the biggest difference between your first and second pregnancy so far? They really haven't been that much different. The only main thing is, like I said, the nausea lingered on a lot longer with this pregnancy, whereas it subsided quickly with my first. But with both pregnancies, I never physically got sick, so I'm really grateful for that. It was just really just nausea. So, and headaches. I still had like headaches with this one. I had really bad headaches with Addie my first and third trimester, so I'm crossing my fingers that they don't come back in my third trimester. I've only had like two really bad ones where I was like couch bound. But other than that, my pregnancies have been very similar. One said it looks like a boy the way you're carrying. Missy underscore Missy Miss says, are you working out or thinking of working out while you're pregnant? I had a couple questions about this. I am still working out. I've con I have continued to work out since I found out I was pregnant. I work out three to four times a week. And the only real thing that has changed, two things that have changed with that is I've lessened the weight that I'm using, like with kettlebells or arm weights, I decrease the weight. And the biggest difference now that I'm 19 weeks is I really, my doctor said she doesn't want me doing anything on my back where I'm laying flat. For ab exercises and stuff, I do them against the wall. That's another thing. Now that I'm nearing 20 weeks, they recommend that you don't sleep on your back because of the artery that runs down the center of your abdomen and because you get larger and all your weight is like sitting there which is so hard for me and this was something I struggled with with Addie too because I'm a major back sleeper. I'm very uncomfortable sleeping on my side so that's definitely been a little bit of a struggle. I do have a body pillow but it doesn't always help so that's kind of been a struggle and something that I just have to get used to but as far as working out I really love it. I feel good when I do it. I think that definitely helps with me to not feel sluggish and to just still have a lot of energy. Thing you want to do differently with the baby this time around? Phenomenal girl asks. I don't think so. I'm probably gonna still stick to the same like sleep habit schedules that I did with Addie. I say that, but that could all go out the window. I just don't know how this baby's gonna be. But there was nothing with my first, uh, with Addie when she was an infant that I said like I would change this time around. Tiana.eng says, I thought I remembered you saying you had your belly button pierced. How has being pregnant affected that? Has the whole close up or stretched out? So that was something I was really worried about with my first pregnancy because everyone said your whole stretches. Mine never really stretched. I do think it has closed up because I haven't had an, a, a ring in there in like, oh my god, 10 years. So yeah, it's not something that looks weird or looks different. Did to Tosing says, hi Michelle, are your children super excited about baby on the way? Yes, they are so excited. Addie only wants a girl and Louie really wants a boy, so it's going to be interesting. I've been kind of like trying to ease Addie into the idea that it might be a little brother and she just doesn't want to hear it. So I'm sure it'll be fine if it's a boy when the baby gets here, but for right now I just think all her little girlfriends are girls and she's just, she's a girl, so it's just easier for her to want that and relate to that. And although Louie really wants a little boy, I think he would be totally fine because he's awesome with Addie. Did you get morning sickness? If so, how do you deal with it? What makes you feel better? So when I was nauseous, the only things that, it was kind of a double-edged sword. I would feel nauseous, so I would eat to feel better, and then I'd feel sick after I ate. So ginger ale really helped me. Any kind of club soda, fizzy waters helped. Little snacks throughout the day. I really wasn't into full-blown meals because I wasn't always hungry, so I would just snack, like eat frequently throughout the day, and I think that really helped to keep my nausea at bay, and then I wasn't overeating to where I felt sick afterwards. So I snacked on a lot of fruit, I snacked on raw vegetables and hummus, I still snack on all this stuff. I would make a smoothie, almonds, cashews, nuts, string cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt, avocado toast, a piece of toast, cinnamon raisin toast, just little things really helped me. Um, our home, his heart, again, asked differences noticed between the two pregnancies. Did your belly pop sooner than with Addie? I know a, mo a lot of moms say the second show is quicker. You look fantastic. Thank you. I, I think it did pop a little quicker. I don't think I really started to show with Addie until I was about six months. So I definitely think I did pop sooner this time around. I'll be going to do some baby hauls like clothing and gear. Manders87 asks, if I haul stuff, I will definitely share it. That's one of the reasons I kind of do want to find out the gender because if it's a girl, I literally don't need one single thing. I have six bins of girls' clothing in my basement, much of which still have tags on. 
So if it's a boy, then it would be fun to shop for a little boy. But as far as gear, I don't, there's nothing I really need. I have everything from my first pregnancy and everything that I got because I didn't know the gender is neutral. So that kind of is awesome. The only things that I think I will get with this baby, the Halo bassinet, because I had a bassinet with Addie which she never slept in. She always ended up sleeping in the pack and play. And I like that the Halo bassinet pulls right up to your bed and raises higher or lower. And my couple of my friends have it and swear by it. So that's something I think I'm gonna buy new. The crib is white, so I'm reusing the crib. The bedding was all white. I might switch up the high chair. I might get a new high chair because I have the Graco high chair, which really worked well for us, but I felt like it was very bulky. And I would like to get something a little bit more compact that doesn't take up as much space. Although I don't really need a high chair, so if I do end up getting one, I can give one of those to my mom or my mother-in-law to keep at her house. I have the stroller, got the car seats, swings, play mats, boppy pillow. Yeah, I don't think the tub I have, so there's nothing I really need. Change cravings, birth plan, plan to bottle or breastfeed, what are you most excited about? Wit dot... Deo. Strange cravings I talked about. I don't have a birth plan. I didn't have a birth plan going into it with Addie. I, like I said, I'm a type A personality and if I make a plan and it goes wrong, then I will have anxiety. So I think it's better for me to just go into it with an open mind. With Addie, I went into it with a very open mind as far as the epidural. Everyone was like, get the epidural. And I was like, I just want to see. I want to see how it is. I don't want to go into it thinking I'm going to get it because what if I get in and it's too late to get it? Or what if I don't really need it? Which I needed it and I got it. And I will probably be getting it the second time around. But as far as like any other plan, I just... That's something I don't think you can plan because you just never know. And I do plan to breastfeed again with this baby. I breastfed Addie, loved it. It was convenient, it was inexpensive, and she actually was not sick for the entire first year, never was at the doctor, and I definitely think breastfeeding had something to do with it. I'm a little nervous that I'll have a toddler while I'm breastfeeding. I'm a little nervous to see how that's gonna work out because I can't just like sit on the couch and nurse because she's gonna be needing stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm a little nervous to see how that's gonna go, but I don't think that's gonna change the plans. Jasmine, love NARS9. Best and worst things about pregnancy. I love being pregnant. I loved being pregnant with Addie. I'm enjoying this pregnancy. Worst things, I think the things that you can't eat, the skincare that you can't use, nausea isn't fun, but nothing that's too, that makes it hor a horrible experience. I've really, knock on wood, been super lucky with both pregnancies. Ellie here, 22, do you guys have names picked out? Does Dan plan on teaching the baby Italian? I would love for him to teach the baby Italian because his mom and his grandmother, everyone speaks fluent Italian and it's something I wish I could speak or even Greek for that matter. So that would be nice. We haven't really talked about that. Jules underscore 1994 asks, I'm super curious if you already have a specific plan program on how to lose the baby weight as you've mentioned that your wedding will be three months after not that you have to look amazing thank you I don't really have a plan I plan on still eating right and still working out once I can work out again but I'm definitely not gonna make it something that's a priority or something that I lose a lot of sleep over or stress about because I just really want to be focused on the baby but I definitely think being active, even if that means like taking walks around the block if I can't get to the gym, is going to be important. It's going to be hard getting to the gym with a newborn and schedules with the other kids, so I'm not going to stress about it. I just think if I continue to eat right throughout my pregnancy and afterwards and stay active, that's, that's my only main plan. How many kids do you plan to have? Dan and I talk about this a lot. I say I always imagine myself being pregnant three times. But I, that also, I thought, meant three kids, and we'll have three kids. Dan really loves the idea of having siblings together. I think if this baby's a girl, we're definitely going to try for a boy. I, quite frankly, do want to have a boy, and I know he really wants a boy. If this is a boy, maybe we stop. I don't know. I'm very open to it. But even when I was pregnant with Addie, everyone asked me how many I would have, and I, I would always say, like, ask me after the baby's here, because everything changes. I'm open to having more, but not set on, dead set on having more. Lily Uterio 23 says, your favorite places or place to shop for maternity clothes? I haven't started shopping for maternity clothes. I still have my whole big box from my first time around, but back then, Target, Old Navy, and... I think H&M, I did really well for maternity stuff. 
the underscore bless underscore babe says, have you ever had to take antibiotics while pregnant? Yes. I'm still taking the same antibiotic that I've been for, on for like 10 years for like my IBS. It's thing that is considered a class C drug and I was really nervous about it with my first pregnancy, but if I don't take that, I literally will be in pain and just have horrible stomach issues like the entire time. So I took it the whole time with Addie and I was fine. I'm still continuing to take it with this baby, but other than that, uh, I don't take anything else besides my prenatals. I have had to take Tylenol those two times. I had really bad migraines because I just needed to get some relief to be able to function. But other than that, I really try not to take anything I don't have to take. Evan Jade Stone 11 says, I'd love to know the products and makeup you use that are safe for pregnancy, specifically if anything, replace something you usually use that isn't safe. I'm gonna do an updated skin routine for night and day, so I'll share those with you. Not too much has changed, I just X'd out the products that had retinol in them and replaced them with products that had lactic and glycolic acid. You plan to show more favorite baby products, nursery, etc. Andriana Particle says, is Addie so excited? Yes, yeah, she's so excited, and I definitely will be sharing products in the nursery as we get there. Anna Nicole Tedder asks, to know what foods and cleaning products and skincare you avoid during pregnancy and what you use as a substitution for those instead. I've always used the Honest cleaning products, even when I'm not pregnant, and I just keep up with those. That hasn't changed. KSU0817 asks about working out. I assume you didn't work out when you are pregnant with Addie. Do you notice a big difference in your body and how you're feeling with this pregnancy? Like I said, I definitely feel more energized. That's the best way I can describe it. I don't feel as sluggish but ask me in another couple weeks. Katrina111 asks what your favorite body care products are. My sister-in-law is expecting and I wanna make her a basket of products organically, preferably that she can use. So I really am not picky when it comes to body wash. Right now I'm using the one from Honest that Addie uses and I've also used the First Aid Beauty uh, Gentle Cream Cleanser, which is fine. Cetaphil is always a good one. It doesn't have a lot of synthetic fragrances and stuff in it. And as far as moisturizer, I've talked about this before. I'm in, obsessed with this. I even I brought it in here to share it with you. From Elsie Organics, her massage body oil. This is in the Scent Romance, but she has it in a couple different ones. It's all I've been using. I lather up my belly, my boobs, my butt, my legs. My belly has been getting a little itchy at times, and I love this for that. I put it on after I get out of the shower. I do it again before I go to bed and it's been awesome, it's super gentle, and it keeps my skin really hydrated. So this is really the only thing aside from, sometimes I'll layer it with lotion, but again, I'm not really picky when it comes to body lotion, just something that, that moisturizes and isn't greasy, but I always put this on after because I just love how it makes my skin feel and it's not greasy. I could put my leggings on right after. Oh, JKIYT, cesarean or natural? I would like to do natural again, but again, I'm always open to if a cesarean needs to happen for the sake of the baby and myself, then that's what'll happen, but I would prefer to do it the natural way again. Natural as in vaginally with an epidural. <laughs> I'm wearing a black shirt, so it's kind of hard to see, but this is my little, a little bump. My belly, you can see, for those that were asking about the belly piercing, I don't even know if you can see it. It's not stretched out or anything. No stretch marks yet. I didn't get any with Addie, so I'm hoping that's still the case. I did get a tiny little one on my butt with Addie, and I did get some on my boobs when I was breastfeeding, but they've gone away, and I'm sure they'll come back when I'm breastfeeding again, but not on my belly, which is awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little bump update. I'll definitely keep you guys posted on changes or gender if we end up finding out. Thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you later. Bye.